Hi everyone, welcome to the Outside Xbox E3 2015 Command Center, uh, where we have just been at the Bethesda conference and we've seen the Fallout 4 gameplay reveal. We're gonna talk about seven new things that you can do in Fallout 4 that you couldn't do in previous Fallout games. You're gonna knock him dead at the Veterans Hall tonight, hon. You think? Instead of one character, you're creating two characters now, a, a man and a woman. Um, you'll still play as only one of them, um, but essentially it's got this new sort of really tactile character customization, facial morphing system where you can kind of pull the nose out and things like that and add beard and remove beard. What do you think, huh? Beard or no beard? And so you create these, this couple who then have a baby and it generates a baby based on your couple that you've created. And right. obviously that baby's gonna kind of tie into the story at some point. You'd think, yeah, you wouldn't go to all that trouble of making a baby and then have it nuked in the first yes, exactly. five minutes. I liked the way it was done in the bathroom mirror and mm. they were just sort of like jostling. Yeah, the dancing back and control forth. Control of the mirror. And it ties into um, how the story starts, which is pre-war. So Quite. you're gonna be able to explore the house pre-war, see what things were like before everything got nuked which I'm really looking forward to, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. 173.5 degrees Fahrenheit, to perfection. You get those hints of the fiction in Fallout 3 when you're wandering around, but everything's blown up, whereas you're going to get to see it as it was, shiny and new. But you better make sure that the decisions you've made in the character creator that you're happy with, because that character is going to survive 200 years somehow. Hold on! And you're the sole survivor of Vault 111. Mm. Uh, you see the, the guy get his pit boy off a like skeleton. A skeleton it's hand, like, yeah, yeah they're, they're long dead, everyone else. Mm. So something weird is going on. Either a robot or some like pretty suspect cryogenic yeah, science. Yeah, I think, yeah maybe. Probably. Okay, so the next thing you can do is you can talk. I mean, this was speculated on when in the trailer the, the guy said let's go pal and people were speculating whether you would have a fully voiced protagonist in Fallout 4 and it's been confirmed that you have no no that's not possible I wasn't out for that long which is a first I think it's really going to change the vibe of Fallout because previously although it had that really awkward kind of crash zoom conversation <laughs> thing you were always kind of in your character's head um, yeah. And, and a lot of people played it in sort of first person mode, even though in Fallout 3 you did have the option to switch to third person mode. But it feels like, I think Fallout 4 is going to feel a lot more like kind of Mass Effect in that, you know, it has those directed cut scenes, it has those sort of context conversation options. Yeah, that's what they reminded me of, Mass Effect, mm. the way it was like four different options and it gave you just sort of a, the gist of what you would say yeah. rather than in previous Fallout games where you get basically the whole line of dialogue. You want to come with me, pal? <laughs> There's a sense that it's going to be a more sort of cinematic game. It's weird because, you know, in Bethesda games, you do tend to kind of transpose yourself onto the character because they don't have a voice. And I wonder whether, you know, how connected you'll feel with your character. Let's stick together. So the next new thing you can do is boss a dog around. Amazing. I guess. Hey, <laughs> head over there. Well, I mean, you could do that in previous Fallout. You could get a dog. Companion, yeah. but this is like a kind of permanent companion for the also, game, it looks like. more useful, Yeah, it seems. okay, so you've got like contextual uh, commands for the dog. They showed um, him sending the dog off to fetch a spanner, I think, from a, yeah. a garage, which is... That's a smart dog. Yeah, it's got the um, trade uh, thing that you had with companions in previous Fallout games, so basically you can use them as a pack horse. Right. Um, I don't know how that works. Are you putting things dog. inside the dog or? Yeah, you're just loading a nuke onto the back <laughs> of the dog for when you need it later, some power armor pieces mm. and things like that. Ready to get back out there? Um, and also, the, you know, the dog will help out in combat as well. They showed yeah. it um, fighting some, uh, some enemies. It's quite cute. It was more expressive and stuff. Like, I hope that it's more of a character rather than just a thing that kind of follows you around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, dog, dog meat in the, in the previous, fall, in Fallout 3, just sort of follows you around and doesn't really do a lot. So hopefully this dog is, is a character in and of itself. Yeah, um, I, think it, I think it will be. There'll be a lot of people who don't bother with it though, or shoot it. <laughs> Next thing is uh, building. They're adding building yes. to Fallout. It's not compulsory, but no. it's going to be in there if you want to do it. And it looks like it's quite a deep sort of building system. Oh yeah, I mean, they got Minecraft in our, our Fallout, basically. Yeah. So it's really, really cool, actually. Uh, very, very flexible, way more so than Hearthfire was in Skyrim, which was a, sort of the same kind of idea, yeah. but, uh, but far less flexible. Now you can pl individually place building items all around, build your own, uh, not just houses, but settlements, then wire up them up with electricity. You can build generators. 
and lights and you know and then defenses turrets. it's like yeah. a kind of tower defense the thing that's going to change fallout probably the most out of all of this stuff is that all of a sudden all that junk that you pick up in the wasteland is useful so you know in order to build lights you can't just get 10 pieces of scrap metal and and create a light you need a bulb and you know wiring and fr a frame or whatever so it's going to really make you have to concentrate on what you're looting and what you're scavenging. They talked about running Brahmin caravans between different mm. settlements, so it seems like you can have more than one around the place, um, yeah. which can serve different purposes. We saw um, someone in, in one of those helicopters they have, and I was thinking that might be something to do with the settlement, because it was piloted by a, a human pilot. Yeah, right. So it's possible that you could like build a helipad, and mm. then that yeah. gives you the ability to get uh, air transport around between your bases. Guy was on the minigun on the side of it, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in building a settlement if it is completely uninhabited, right? Uh, so, you know, perhaps people will start to move in. There's a real sense of sort of rebuilding after the apocalypse. Although, the one thing I don't understand is building all these buildings, but they all still look completely blown up. You know, yeah. <laughs> give them a fresh coat of paint if you're going to build something. But yeah, it, it'd be really interesting to uh, see how that develops and you know how much of a kind of like Sims sort of thing it is. I can imagine there'll be people who almost immediately sack off the main storyline and just play it like Minecraft and just build things just build. and wire stuff and yeah. create pixel art and things like that. And that ties into the next new thing that you can do, which is um, crafting of equipment and mm -hmm. gear. Fallout has always had that kind of repair thing to it, where you can repair weapons with yeah. old weapons and dismantle things. And this is like a whole new level to that. This is a proper flexible, you know, you decide what kind of stock you want on your weapon, you decide, you know, and it, it was really cool in the footage because you'd see it change the name of the weapon depending on what uh, sort of attributes you'd added to it and things like that. So, I mean, you really are going to be able to create some, some fairly sort of massive uh, weaponry in the game and it will be personalised to, to your style of play. Yeah, they showed the example of making a scope for a rifle mm. where you needed, um, I think it was like adhesive and glass mm -hmm. and steel and some screws. It was like, you don't just find steel and screws, you find yep. things that are, there's like maybe 10 or 20 things that contain that so you can and make you can it disassemble them. yeah you can disassemble so you can get like uh, some steel from a lunchbox or some steel mm -hmm. from a carousel horse and you mm. can get like glass out of a clock or out of uh, a jam jar or mm. something like that so you can get all these different items but they will combine into the scope that you need yeah it's going to uh, change the way that you play fallout because all of the stuff that you pick up like all the rusty tin cans and mm. like toy cars they used to get now actually has a purpose of course the same thing applies to the power armor right mm. which is yeah. Something we sort of speculated about when the trailer came out because it was it looked sort of under construction. And yeah, you're going to be able to add you know different elements, both sort of functional and it seems aesthetic as well. I saw like some little flames painted on the front of the power armor, so you're yeah. really going to be able to make that power armor your own. The thing I'm wondering is that with all this construction of buildings and settlements and you know customization of guns and power armor, you know all this creative stuff like. How are we going to share that with people? Because it's all well and good, you know, creating something in your game that is kind of yours and personalised, but is there going to be a way to share it either through multiplayer or some kind of online sharing system where you, you can really, like, show people your creations beyond just, I don't know, sticking them on YouTube? Yeah. So that's, I mean, they haven't said anything about that, so that's pure speculation, but you have to wonder. You can wear an actual pit boy right now, um. you know the pit boy is an important part of fallout and we love it so much we made a real one uh, so uh this comes with our collector's edition the, there's going to be an app mm -hmm. um, for your phone which will allow you to do all of the operations of your pit boy in the game mm -hmm. on your phone so you can manage your inventory you can heal yourself you can yep. repair your weapons and do all the crafting stuff but also the special edition of the game comes with a, a an legit actual pit boy pit boy that you can then slot your phone into i think that's really cool one of the things about like big complex rpgs on consoles is that fiddling with your inventory is so annoying on a controller mm -hmm. like love consoles to bits but Flicking through your Skyrim inventory or your Fallout inventory on a console controller is just a pain in the bum. So being able to just literally tilt your hand and, and then go through it all on a touch screen and select things and delete things, 
uh, is kind of awesome. The new Pit Boy is really cool as well. It's yeah, it, looks it had a slot for holo tapes in it, so yeah. presumably you'll be able to find more music around mm -hmm. the world, which you can listen to. Because um, Galaxy News Radio was great, but I think it only had like five or six yeah. songs that just re repeated. So you started to get sick of them after a while. So finding new music will be great. Yeah, and also it can play games. You can find game yes. tapes and play um, sort of Donkey Fallout. Kong clone and a Missile yeah. Command clone, and, and uh, it, but it's all still got that kind of Cold War yeah. um, vibe to it. Red so Menace like, and yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Okay, and so the final thing you can do with Fallout 4 is play it this year. Right, Which, um, yeah. I mean, people were thinking it might have been, it might be that because of yeah. uh, the way it was announced. But uh, And I just think, the amount of time, I think, since, since sort of Skyrim. We've known there's, there's been a Bethesda game studio, you yeah. know, in the oven. Um, but yeah, it's just reassuring to know that it's, we don't have to wait that long. Um, not long to clear our schedule and, you know, Retreat yeah. in, into our houses and never pl never play another game yeah, again. Yeah, like five months. That's yeah. so soon, and this is like the first we're seeing of it. So they I, they were saying they've got loads more they haven't yeah. even showed yet. So mm. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a yeah. there's a real sense, uh, even at, with the, just the stuff they've shown, that this is going to be a huge game with just a ton of stuff in there. Mm. The, the the stuff they've been showing has been really really playful and sort of optional and aside from the, the main storyline. Yeah. So there must be so much going on in terms of the plot and, and other mechanics related to that as well. It's an express train to, to launch day, basically. A big explosion, big and loud. Okay, so those were seven new things you can do in Fallout 4. We've been outside Xbox. Keep it locked to our channel all week for more news from E3. Thanks for watching. Ready to fuck some shit up? Oh. Yeah.